and it's on. Greetings, brothers and sisters from around the world, and welcome to TBA After Hours. This is the type of broadcast where I don't necessarily focus on black economics, I focus on black empowerment across the spectrum. Not just economically, but in your social lives, in your political lives, in your community lives. And we're glad to have you here with us this evening. We're not going to take any telephone calls tonight because we don't actually need to. Trust me, you'll agree. And currently on the line with me right now is MK and Kimberly. Welcome both of you to the Black Channel with TBA After Hours. Thank you. Hi. All right, ladies and gentlemen out there. Now, the reason why I have you all here is because, now, just a warning to everybody, it is raining. It's behind off out there right now. So in case there is any foolishness with the lines or whatever, just give it a moment because it may go out or something. If lightning starts hitting and stuff, you can probably hear sirens because it's Louisiana, so when it rains, that means... People already drive fast here. When it rains, apparently that means drive faster. Or they drive dumb, and when it rains, they drive dumber. So, definitely, but don't worry, that's not going to uh, be an impediment. Now, I had a post that I had put up earlier today. And I'm going to just briefly read it to you all so you can uh, see exactly what it is. And... Then we'll be talking to the ladies here tonight about exactly what they think about that. My post here that I had posted up on Facebook at 9.59 a.m. Central Time. It said, it's come to my attention that a lot of females believe that it's not possible for them to become leftovers simply because they refuse to accept it. Ladies, a man can help you waste your entire life if you let him. He will string you along for literally decades while you lose your firm and tight childbearing years. We live in a culture that encourages women in their late teens and 20s to give their best years to Pookie and Ray Ray chasing excitement in the expectation that after those guys are done with you, that all the Mr. Responsibles that you ignored will wait up for you until after you're finished sowing your wild oats. As a man in his late 30s who now has females from 10 and 15 years ago coming to me with their stretch marks, sagging breasts, and kids in tow, I assure you this is not the case. Try to get an honest conversation out of your mothers and grandmothers who've already made these mistakes. If they love you, if they really love you, they'll tell you the truth about your actions and that Mr. Responsible you're passing over today will have better options than to wait for Pookie and Ray Ray's leftovers. Happy post-Valentine's Day. That was the post that I had put up here earlier today. And it generated a lot of response. It generated a lot of people talking about it. It generated a lot of conversation about it. So, of course, that makes it prime for TBA After Hours because there are a lot of misgivings out there. There are a lot of misconceptions. Now, the last time that I had MK on... We were talking about the lame dudes and they think that they're going to be able to command respect from the females while they've produced nothing economically. They want the respect to be based upon something intangible, immeasurable, and invisible. And of course, that is, that is complete lunacy. That's why these people are lined up at Plenty of Fish and Craigslist and Tinder and Grinder and Slender and Minder and Finder and any other website out there that you can name. And have no females to show for. Those of us living in the real world do not have that problem because we deal with the adult world in an adult fashion. But this is the flip side of it. There's a lot of delusions out there amongst the females. I don't talk about... I don't talk about, you know, I don't give dating advice. I don't give relationship advice. I give empowerment advice. And whether you're talking about your job, your employer, your church politics or your personal relationships your ability to navigate any of those things is going to be dictated by what you bring to the table you will not be able to demand or even expect anything if you brought nothing to the table so I can speak on empowerment I can speak on power dynamics in relationships because they're all the same 
So that's what I have you all here for with me tonight. Now, based upon what you just heard here, ladies, I want to start with uh, MK. And I want you to, based upon what you said, because you left some comments today as well, what did you think about that particular post and this attitude that is pervasive today that you can mess off your late teens and your 20s as a female and responsible men, they will just be sitting on a shelf waiting for you to get done, getting run through and ragged out and getting getting the spare tires rolled off you by Pookie and Ray Ray. They will be there when you get back. What do you think about this particular pathology we see taking place today? Well, um, to me, I think that women who think they can spend their young years sleeping with men and then by, I don't know, 35 or even late, or late 30, 30s to just find that great guy who will just accept them the way they are with their uh, baggages because most of the time you can't go from one relationship to another even if we don't talk about the physical aspect of the body that uh, the, the woman's body will age when you take in consideration the emotional damages that relationships do to women I, I cannot see a man who is on point who has his life together who want to settle with a woman who is emotionally damaged so to me it's it's uh, very delusional for women to think that it can happen now kimberly what do you think now now she's from france mk is now you're from america you're from texas what do you think about this idea this pathology that's taking place that says that the guys who are most desirable you're supposed to ignore them in your 20s and you need to go find some reckless goon to go off and go chase excitement with and don't worry when you get finished with that the most desirable guys are just waiting for you to come back after you've got your stretch marks and your kids in tow and a few tattoos what do you what do you think of that well jason i think and i'm talking generally i think there's just a culture of ignorance in black society and meaning i don't necessarily think that your commentary is what is being told to black women but the actions say that because i mean we go after in our minds we think the most popular guys or the most handsome guys are the most desirable and that's just not the fact and i tell a lot of my younger cousins and family members you should be focused on the guy that's majoring in chemistry, the guy that's making straight A's, the guy that's not the most popular one. That is the guy that has probably the most drive and that will succeed. But, I mean, I think it's just reflective in everything that is put on a pedestal in black society. If you're an entertainer, if you're an athlete, these are considered our best and brightest, which we know that that is not the case. So I, I don't necessarily think that we're being told to go after Pookie and Ray Ray, but they're the flashiest. You know, they get the most attention. And so women gravitate toward that. And if you're not being told differently, you don't, you really don't know any better. So, I, I mean, I may be wrong, but at least that has been my experience and the experience of my peers is that you're just, you're just not being taught. And so, like I say, I just think there's a culture of ignorance. And well, our best and brightest are considered athletes, entertainers, flashy people, people who talk a lot, preachers, things like that. And so I think those are the people that we tend to gravitate to. And as you can tell, those are the people that are not building. They really don't have any drive in their 20s. They just appear to. Well, here's the problem I would have with that statement. The problem that I would have is that you say that you don't think they're being told that, but they are being told that. I mean, Beyonce did a whole song about it, and she's not the only one. 
And it's one thing for a record company to make a song. It's another thing for people to be playing it and listening to it. And making that a steady diet that they that they feed themselves mentally. Furthermore, uh, I mean, we had people who commented on the thread and whatnot. I mean, you've got plenty of females out here that their parents are telling them that when you're young, you're supposed to go out and go have fun. And so they are presenting Pookie and Ray Ray as viable options to quote unquote have fun with. And telling them the girl, don't worry. Um, as, as I think her name is Jerisa, she commented today that they tell them black don't crack and whatnot. And nothing that you do sexually as a female, nothing that you do brings down your value. Now, when you well, say I, that I, to a young female, what she takes from that is, well, hell, I got a license to kill. I can do go do anything. If you tell me that nothing can bring down my value, then that means I can have as many sex partners. My name can be out there as much as you want. I can have as many tattoos. I can have as many kids. I can have as many STDs. I can have as many stretch marks. After all, nothing can bring down my value. Again, I, again, Jason, I don't think that we are being told that. But again, we are being told, yeah, take your time. Don't be in a rush. Like you say, have your wait, fun. Wait, 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 back, 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 back up for a moment here. Let me, let me, now you say, I don't think we're being told that. Yes, we are in those exact terms. It well, is, is being stated in those well, exact terms. Nothing you're as no, no, but don't let anybody tell you what your value is. Nobody can tell you what your value is. You're not bad. It doesn't bring your value down just because you have children. I mean, you you see my post. If I post up that, you know, a single mother is less desirable than a woman without children, you'll immediately have a bunch of women jump up and say, no, that's not true. A woman with kids is just as desirable as one who doesn't have. Right. And, and I mean, and I, I certainly agree with what you're saying, but when society or our parents or our family, when they're telling us these things, they're not telling us the full scope of it. When they say, oh, you can have fun or, oh, take your time. They're not telling, they're not being truthful with us and telling us that, like you say, we're wasting our valuable years. And I hate to say this, but I think a lot of that generation, they don't feel like the choices they made to get married and to try to build families and to try to build structure, they don't see any value in it. And I'm talking about my parents and that generation, you know, 55 and up, they don't see any value in it. In their eyes, that was not a good life. So they they are in some ways training women, oh yeah, go out and have your fun, but going out and having your fun, the inevitable will happen it's almost impossible to stay, you know, a virgin or to stay pure, you know, that many years, you know, beyond high school and things like that. So they're not being truthful. But honestly, a lot of people that I've seen in my parents' age range, they did not see value in getting married in their 20s and trying to build. And they feel like that was a waste of time. They regret that. They don't see that as valuable. So how do you, how do you teach another generation that? Now, that when, you're, when your parents don't value it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I would like to say, as I said on, as I commented earlier, I would like to say that um, we have to admit that uh, girls in general, when we are uh, teenager, teenagers, we tend to like, or yes, to like uh, bad boys, or I don't know how I, I could say it, but the difference will be uh, the way you, your parents have taught you to, to behave. So you, basically, you know the difference between what you see and what you have to do. What you see on TV, you, you know that it's just entertainment because even myself, I, you know, I was watching clips and stuff like that but i knew how to make the difference between what i'm seeing on tv and the real life so it wasn't that you know i wanted to go out with a guy who looks like 
the guy I was seeing on TV, I was very pragmatic at that, okay, when I was a teen. But this is due to the upbringing I had. And I, I, I'm sure that those who didn't have an, like a strict upbringing for a girl to know how to differentiate, uh, uh, the reality and what she's seeing on TV or, you know, it's not easy, actually. Well, the thing is, as females, you're supposed to be using your late teens and your 20s. That's when you're in your prime. That's when you're in physical prime. All your body parts are sitting up nice and firm and tight. And that's when you get the most male attention. And other groups of women, non-black groups of women, teach their females that you use that to your socioeconomic advantage. Our females are instead passing on a culture that says use it for a joy ride. And it would be different if, quote, the fun time were ending and just you go about your life. But they are instead making permanent decisions. 50% of black women have herpes. 20% of black males do. Almost 50% of black females of dating age are single mothers. Only 20% of black men overall are single fathers. Now you notice that 20% number for black men stays the same across the board. So what this tells us is we got a high number, almost 50% of black women who are very sexually reckless, but they must be doing it with that bottom 20% of black males. Pookie Ray Ray, the thug low lives who ain't going nowhere and doing nothing. And these are guys, they got multiple kids by multiple women. They never have just one. We have a situation where half the females are gravitating towards the lowest common denominator. Now, that's not my opinion. That's just math now. That's just math. That's math. And I'm trying to figure out since when did, quote, gravitating, when did bad boy become criminal low life with kids by another woman and that's the guy I want when did that when did a guy with a criminal record and tattoos and kids by other women since when did that become the preferred when did that become the preferential position to be in I don't know that it is um apparently uh, <sighs> Well, I you mean, know what? No, no, it's not. It's not. And that's the whole thing about it is it's not preferred 10 years down the line. And what we have right now, we all know that in black society, we tend to have these systemic waves where everybody just follows the leader or follows the crowd on stuff or follows whoever they seem to think is the prevailing train of thought. And what happens is like in a situation like this, hood rat culture has become black female culture. And so even a bunch of females who were not raised in hood rat environments, they emulate it. That has become black female culture to the point that it, that has become the rite of passage for black females, not accumulating, you know, a name for themselves, not a good name, not, uh, you know, building status for themselves. Status is based upon your sexual exploits and whatnot to the, to the endangerment and the hazard of everything else. And what happens is that, and here's the part that what I was saying about the leftovers thing, it would be different. And I was talking to someone the other day about this. It would be different if this was happening from a position of ignorance, but it's not. It would be different if it was happening from a position of weakness. I mean, from, of ignorance, but it's not. It's not. Because when well, you're in your twenties and you see the nerds and whatnot, like you said, we got the nerds, we got the geeks, we got the guys who are sitting up here talking about, you know, I want to start my own business and stuff. And what invariably happens is they will have the females dodge around him. I've got guys today in 18, 19 years old sounding like I did 20 years ago, which tells me the cycle rolls on. They're contacting me and saying the same thing. That... And these are not all a bunch of hood rat females. These are females even raised by middle class parents. It's become the culture. And they, they're they doing it because they're telling themselves and they'll sit up here and say, that, oh, he'll be there. 
just like he wants me today, he'll want, I mean, their parents are telling them, he'll want you in 10 years from now. He'll be there. He ain't going nowhere. They'll be right there. So what you're, what they're really taking away from that is, well, hell, I can just do what I want to. He'll be waiting on me. He will be waiting to bail me out when I get done with all this nonsense. He'll be waiting on me. Look how much he wants me now. He'll be, he'll be right there when I get back. And then they go off on this 10-year adventure and come back with all these scrapes and scratches and broken limbs. And then the, if they knew it at 20 that this was Mr. Responsible, but he's boring. I, I, I had a group of teenage girls sit up here and tell me, I want a dude with some edge. Raised by mm -hmm. middle-class parents now. Not can't tell you what they want that for. But they're off thrill-seeking, and they're under the illusion that, well, the responsible guy who goes to work every day, I will come back for him after I've gotten this excitement out of my system, and after I've, after I've done that, because I won't be able to be the good housewife over here. I cannot tell you all. I mean, I'm in my late 30s, and I cannot tell you all how many females right now, I could, I could sit up here on this phone literally and dial a dozen, literally. I could call I could dial them up a dozen of them right now and I'm serious I could I could pretty much ask them for anything you could name. I could ask them to fix me a meal and tell them to deliver it right now and it's past 11 o'clock p.m. on Central Time. And in an hour they will be at my door. And if I'm by that I mean if I call them all together at the same time. I could literally call them all at the same time and they will be here. Nobody wants to be Susie Homemaker at 19, even though they know that's what they're supposed to be doing. They want to be, you know, Miss Hoodrat at 19, at, but they know they're supposed to be doing something better. But it's like, oh, I've got the luxury of not doing that. I could never become leftovers. Never. Because what I got can never get old. Yeah, but, um, but I, they say, I, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. At 18 or 17, most of the time, you don't even know that cellulite and stretch marks exist. So I think at 17, 18, you just, you don't, you, 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 you don't even imagine that you will age at some point you just live your life and you think that it will be that that way all the time so uh, i think uh, most of girls and women don't use their common sense because even if they go with uh, uh, some thug you know if they have a relationship with a thug one time what i don't understand is how can you go from one thug to another and you don't realize at some point that it's not working. Well, but but it is working because they that's what, that's my whole point is that we have this misconception that there's some naivete or some ignorance at work and there's not. I'm telling you that just like the civil rights generation, they were not tricked into the paltry, puny goals of integration. That was all they wanted. They didn't want economic empowerment. They didn't want black Wall Streets. They didn't want that. They wanted integration and they got integration because that was the goal these girls are not being tricked either by themselves or society they want somebody he ain't building nothing he's not doing nothing but it's exciting and everybody around here is signing off on it now i'll go get there i mean they're literally playing this game where they're saying i will go get with mr responsible after i'm done doing this but Jason, it goes back to just what you were saying, um, the civil rights generation. This is the generation that has that that um, raised you, myself, and the next generation. These are the people. And I don't think that they were truthful to us. Just like many of our parents did not talk to us about um, racism, white supremacy, they did not talk to us about building families either. This is the same generation that is telling girls, 
oh, don't worry about getting married and having a baby. You go to college or you do your thing and you'll get with a guy later. And you're absolutely right. That is when your body's the tightest. That is when you look the best. You know, nobody is prepping, prepping us for that. They're, you know, have fun now, live now. There's no rush to get married. There's no rush. I mean, to be a homemaker is shunned upon. Now, to desire that, to desire to want to have a family, to not have a child out of wedlock, there's immediate um, something's wrong with you because this is a culture now. The culture is anything goes, live and let live. So, But that is coming from that civil, civil rights generation. Let's just be honest. These are the same people that are grooming, you know, young adults. And so it, it's a point of where does it stop? Where does it stop? Because right now it's a vicious cycle, just like women are bypassing the smart guys, the driven guys, the intelligent young men in, in school. The same thing is going for the girls. The guys are passing those girls up for the girls that are popping it and dropping it like it's hot and dressing, you know, skanky. The conservative girls get passed over just as well. And so we have this cycle again that, you know, you know the least of us are the most important. Okay. It, and, it, and don't where give does it me, stop? Don't get me wrong. I mean, I flog the guys about this. I do. Everybody's heard me do it. Fellows are mad at me around the country and around the world. So be it. I'm just going to tell the truth about what happens. And understand, I of all people understand because I have to look for people to do business with. And it's not a lot of black folk doing business thoroughly. So if you're not doing business with me thoroughly, I can imagine what you're doing with your woman. Real talk. However, MK and K, I got to tell you, there is this real, there is this real myth out there that black males are just passing by wife material on every corner. And that is simply untrue. That is just simply untrue. You said about the conservative females. Kim, I'm going to ask you, where are they? Because what you say, they, they gravitate to the girls who are popping it, locking it, and dropping it. Show me where they, the females who aren't doing it. Now, we can go on any website you want to, and the females, every black female's got a booty pic. Every single one. Or got her breasts flopped out in front of the camera. The females who are on some Attila Shabazz stuff, you can count them on one hand. So... My first question to you would be, where are these females who are not popping it and dropping it and showing their behinds? Where are they? Because to say that statement, that would make it that would intimate that somehow there's this vast reservoir or even a reasonable supply of them. And it's like instead of the situation that we're seeing, which is like, man, you got to look. It's like finding a needle in a stack of needles. No, I, I agree. There's not. Um, and there's the, the not... ones who are worthwhile and stuff, I mean, take a look at what happens with them. You know, you got Venus and Serena Williams and whatnot. You know, you got your Paula Pattons. You know, if, if you've got black females with some sense and whatnot, but the ones who do have some sense, you know, they are really they are really in the crosshairs of non-black men uh, to a large degree, because as black men, we have not built an economy. And therefore, we cannot reward females who are on point. We don't have the ability to reward them. As it stands, you know, that tends to be a problem. But at the same time, when 80% of your females are overweight, 50% got herpes, and 45% are single mothers, we have this illusion that we're dangling in front of people. That, well, the guys are just not trying hard enough. And it's like, is anybody taking a look at this? Do you understand what happens when I tell you that, okay, I just want a female who doesn't have an STD. Now, that would seem to be incredibly reasonable to say that. It would seem that way. But do you realize that you just removed half of black females? Do you realize you just removed half of them? Nobody wants to talk I about that. No, I agree with that. And, so, and but, I wait, think, wait, 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 no, let, me, let me finish. Do you realize that your definition of, quote, conservative, 
I'm not really sure what you mean by conservative, and I'll have you do that in a moment. But do you understand that what definition of conservative includes STDs? Let me give you another one. What definition, get, answer this one for me, Kims. Help clear this up for me because somebody in the chat room just has a good question. What definition of conservative also includes having tattoos? I would not include having tattoos in that. I, I would say conservative would be everything that the opposite of what you say is all over Facebook and any other social media. The girls with the tattoos, the girls with the extreme makeup weaves. Um, but can we all partial. agree that those so, females are few and far between? Can we agree on that? Oh, I don't disagree. I, I, I don't disagree with you. Yeah, but, but here's my I point is that they're not being passed over. The ones who are actually the real thing, they're not being passed over. It's fighting room only. It's fighting but I room think, only. I, I think I think black society is being subpar is so standard. Do you understand? Like it shouldn't be the norm. That sh you, I mean, I really, cause I, I mean, I look at some of my white counterparts and I'm not saying that they have better choices, but it seems to be that they do male and female, like being below average is just, you know, everyday status for black people, not achieving, not being, driven not having goals and ambition being content with life as is is very standard in the black community so it's it's gonna be hard pressed to find those men and women honestly i mean you know it's just i mean no there's not a place that we're all just sitting waiting to be found no but subpar you can find that everywhere and i think and i, and I think that is the bigger problem than not just your statement is true that you posted on facebook it absolutely is true but i think just the culture of not wanting to achieve is our our standards are just so low Jason. but kim but kim <laughs> that's the kim, problem kim here's the issue though you you use the word substandard kim i use the word pregnant and stds Now, there's a difference between substandard and herpes. There's a difference between substandard and AIDS. There's a difference between substandard and four bastard babies. They're not the same thing. Now, it, it would be different if 50% of black men had herpes, 50% of black men were single fathers. You know, it would be different if that were the case, but that's not the case. 80% of black males are the opposite. Where the the math is pointing to a severe problem with the females, and my thing is about okay, what is promoting this? Because if you can contaminate the females, you've destroyed the race. So and it's I one thing to say the word substandard. You know, being illiterate is substandard. Not be not graduating from high school is substandard. Having, I think your having four bastard, too. but having four bastard babies, that's beyond just substandard. That's beyond that. Because but again, that, that's that what makes I'm saying, you, your behavior. That makes you ineligible is what I'm saying. Substandard means that you I'm can be, saying, substandard I, means I, you can I be. I know a lot of women that you, you name and that have, that are in those situations and I mean, I don't know if the men they are with are good men or not. I don't know. I can't judge that. But oh, in theory, don't say it. Don't say I, it. I, I mean, in theory, oh, yes. Boy. Oh, man. Go on but, to say it, but I'm just trying to don't do it. Don't do it. I'm not. I'm not. OK, you're, you're going to say it and go ahead and say it. But I'm just I'm trying to warn you because I know where you're going with that. Go ahead and say it and get it on out. I, I mean, what I'm trying to say is I don't see, in, and this is just m my, my view of the world, I don't see men discriminating as hard as you say that they are. Okay, I, I'm just saying, I don't explain what that, that means. Explain what I, that means when I, you say that. I know several women that have had children out of wedlock. You know, I can't speak on their personal, you know, health, but, and they have their own husband two and three. And those aren't even the children's dad. So, I mean, okay. I see that. But did, did you realize, so, did, did you even hear what you just said, Kimberly? Did you even hear that? What did I say wrong, Jason? R repeat what you just said. I can't repeat it. Go ahead. Yes, you can repeat <laughs> it. 
That's why MK is over there snickering because she's like she caught it too. But do you do you realize what you just said? Go ahead. You now you just said now that these women why of course it's not hurting what their access to men because these are women out here doing the same stuff and they're working on their third and fourth husband. The point I was bringing out is that I just don't see that that Kimberly, men are discriminating in the in the way that you Kimberly, say that they are. That's all I'm saying. If she's working on her third and fourth husband, clearly the men are discriminating. She's being tossed out serial times. You see, one of the problems that one of the misnomers that females have today is that they figure if a man sleeps with them, I got him. Not that he loves me. That's a lie. Let's stop this lie. Females today do not believe that if a man sleeps with her, that he loves her. She believes that if he sleeps with her, I got him. Not he I loves me, but I got him. And they think that there's some big accomplishment in getting a man to marry them and take them to the altar. That don't mean a damn thing. And what you just said about she can have three and four husbands, what that means is these dudes are keeping her around and that's it. That they, they're, they're recycling, they're discarding. So what I'm saying is that if you even listen to the way that you explain that, do you realize that you haven't actually said that these women have escaped, escaped their situation? They found a couple of guys that they can knuckle under and bully to the pulpit. They were able to bully them to the altar. But as soon as those guys wanted to leave, they were gone. And these females are right back in the position that they were in. In other words, the men are discriminating. By definition of the way you just described it. They are discriminating. If they weren't, she wouldn't be working on husband number four. She would still be on husband number one. Now, another thing is about this husband thing. A lot of dudes out here, there are a lot of females out here getting married for the sake of being able to say they're married. There's a difference between being married to a dude working at Lowe's and being married to a guy who's actually going somewhere. Absolutely. There's a big difference between that. And too often, females use debate points, but they don't actually use real practical points. And we're counting, well, this big fat beast over here with three kids, she got married to somebody. Was there anybody competing to be with him? Was there anybody else competing to be with him? I mean, seriously. And we don't ever count that. We just count, well, she made it to the altar, so it must be okay, right? Instead of us saying, wait a minute, hold on, is there some shit? Her, her marriage license comes with an asterisk. Her, her record comes with an asterisk. Because it's like, but you're with somebody that didn't nobody else want. Now, if your, if your standard is a win is a win, no matter how ugly. And if the standard is, even if nobody else wants him, as long as you can get him to the altar, it's a win. Well, I, I guess so. I guess you're right. But if we're talking about what I said before, the top choice among men, that's not the case. And like, now, and one more thing here, Kimberly, and I'm not, I'm sure you probably didn't mean it like that, but do you realize that you just confirmed exactly what you were saying at the beginning was not happening? You said that people are not out here telling people, not out here telling women that, oh, your value doesn't go down. When you say that the men are not discriminating, you're saying that their value does not go down. That you see women out here whose value is not going down. No, I mean, no, you're absolutely right. Um, but again, I just want to point out that black families, black parents are not being honest with their children. And again, beyond just having a mate, getting married, your body, again, they're just not being honest with the truth and reality of being black. And what we have to deal with it, we're, we're just not, not being honest on all fronts. I mean, 
I, I just think the problem that you stated is much deeper and larger. Well, I mean, I, in some ways it is, but here's the problem. You need females to raise females. A man mm -hmm. can do many things. He cannot be a mother. He cannot be a feminine role model. A man has never put on a bra, and if he did, it was just for fun, because it's not going to do to him what it does to a female. He can't discuss those things with her. He can't go over those things with her. He can't discuss those intricacies of feminine hygiene and, you know... I I emotional insecurity because females are a bottleneck of emotions he, he can't dis he can't discuss those with her the way that a mother does earl williams was a good parent and i've mentioned this before he's a he's a good parent he made his daughters worldwide stars but let us just be honest venus and serena williams are the two manliest females you'll ever meet they are two of the most manly masculine females you will ever meet they were raised by their father. And he created not one, but two tomboys. And now they're out here in the world trying to discover what femininity is. Because they don't want to go the lesbian route. And they got men falling all over them. But they don't really know how to exude feminine energy. They've been around a man so long. They were raised by a man to deal with the world. That they're totally devoid of those feminine characteristics. So we need the females to deal with this. Why aren't the females coaching and teaching each other that, baby, you got a shelf. You're like a pro athlete. You have a shelf life. And if you mess off your early years, those are your prime years when you can negotiate for the highest contract. You mess those off, those years won't be back. Why is it that the black female culture does not put a premium on doing that with each other anymore? Because they used to until the last 40 years. Now they don't anymore. Why is it that those conversations do not take place among black women as peers, not just parents, but as peers? Why is it that's not happening? I, before, before I answer that question, I wanted to add that you know, it's true that we can put the blame on parents, especially the mother, but also we have to realize that many women doesn't don't use their common sense. You know, me personally, I cannot understand how you can be like 25, 30, 40, and you are still looking for the thugs and you know men or or failures so you can't simply put the blame on parents because at some point in your life you have to be responsible for yourself so that's that's a problem women don't use their common sense and the the reason why they, they uh i think women don't teach their daughters or the women from or girls from the neighborhood how to behave and stuff like that i think because they are competing they will be in their 50s trying to compete with the uh, some younger women in the neighborhood who is 25 so that's the, a huge problem at, at 50 women are not mature enough to sit down with girls and teach them what's wrong and wh how to how to do things, how to interact with men. Yeah, that's a huge problem. So, um, I agree with that as well. But Jason, I just also wanted to point out is that there's another side to this whole situation. I think you have... Um, the mothers who simply are sub maybe consciously or subconsciously telling their daughters to go after the popular guys, the fun guys, the drug dealers, the whatever in their neighborhoods. But then I also think that you have that generation that is telling you, don't worry about being with a man. Don't worry about a guy. You have time, go to college, have fun. At least that was, you know, at least that was my experience. Don't worry about guys. Don't focus on men. Don't don't date. Don't do this. It's bad for you. 
you need to go and you need to get a job. You basically need to function as a male. That was like beating my head. I will say my parents were good about don't get pregnant, don't have a baby, no man will want you. Now, they definitely beat that in my head. But, I mean, it was like basically take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. That was the whole mantra. Now, being that they came from a generation where the man married the woman and took care of her, but they, these are the same people that said, you know, take care of yourself. You don't need a man. You can get him later. You know, go to school, go to college, get your get your career. So, well, here's the thing. How, how, how did that change? That's what I mean. In, a, in, an, in an environment like that, that's what I was saying before. Since when did have fun mean you go hang out with the local low-life criminal? Since when did that become having fun? Why is it we can't have fun with, you know, Charles working at Verizon? Why is it we can't have fun with 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 somebody who's actually sensible why is it fun always always involves some low life and whatnot it's n fun never involves somebody responsible never and that you have a whole culture that has self-destructed to the point that it can no longer define a responsible form of 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 extracurricular activity that's a culture that has self-destructed I think some of it is that we're not, our, our parents haven't been truthful with us. And as you always talk about, they don't have anything to leave us and they don't care if we don't get anything for ourselves either. You know, I, 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 I think that that's part of it is I, I had you now you figure it out. they're not preparing they're not preparing us but at some point in, in your life you are supposed to figure it out because you can't have your parents around you your whole life and my question is how come women get in their 30s 40s and they are still you know doing the same stuff they were doing at 15 well, MK, it's, it's what you're saying there about at some point you have to figure it out where you're correct. But here's the problem. We say use your common sense. You mentioned that before. There's no such thing as common sense. Common sense is just another facet of home training. And you can't figure something out if you do not have a frame of reference. If I'm trying to pick up, you know, a beach ball. And then I try to pick up a cinder block. If I don't know about gravity, I don't have a frame of reference. If I don't know what rubber is, I don't have a frame of reference. I see two large objects, one I can pick up with ease, and the smaller one, a, a ninth of its size, I can't even budge it. I will be there for eternity trying to figure out why I can't move it, because I don't have a frame of reference. But so, I think they do have one because if they were involved since they were like 15 or 16 with thugs, they are supposed to have some sort of experience. And from there, they are supposed to make up their mind and realize that those guys, they, you know, they are useless. They, they don't improve their lives. And Well, I mean, and... In all fairness, though, it is difficult to be able to, you know, differentiate between these things. If you if your mother is your example and she's been laid on by the block. You know, something that is missing in black society and particularly among our women, there was a lady and she did a good a good book on this. I have to uh, go back and get her name. She did a good book about the women, the women of the founding fathers and how the founding fathers in America, they saw it as their occupation to build the society, but that the women had an important occupation too, that the women were to be the protectors of the society's virtues. Considering the fact that the society was built on slavery, the women wasn't doing too great of a job, but other than that, that was their, that was their job. And the women are supposed to protect your virtues. One of the primary virtues a woman is supposed to have and teach her children about is shame. 
She's supposed to teach her children the things that they are supposed to pride themselves on. And that if you fail to accomplish this, then you're an embarrassment. And we, black society, I will say this at the risk of hurting everybody's feelings out there. We have the only women in the world who do not have a sense of shame. As a group. As a collective. They don't have a, group, a sense of shame. There's... N Nothing that happens to them embarrasses them, humiliates them. You know, there is no, oh, if this happened, I would just die. That's sorely missing. As a group, we don't have that. Now, if you don't have a sense of shame, how am I supposed to give you a, how do you have a sense of virtue when you have no sense of shame? If there's nothing that shames you, then how can you hold anything in high esteem? Because not holding anything in high esteem, they're all the same to you. You're not embarrassed. You're not humiliated. Therefore, every position in life is equal in your eyes. Every position is. How do we reinstitute shame? How do we get that one back? I don't know if we can. I think we're so beyond that now, Jason. I mean, there's nothing shameful anymore. It's, I mean, I mean, there used to be a time that, you know, if you got pregnant and you weren't married, you know, it was quiet. It was on the low. Now it's, oh, throw me a party, throw me a baby shower, shower me with attention. So there's no shame anymore. Um, let me show my body to you on Facebook or Twitter or whatever social media platform. So I don't, I mean, but I mean, shouldn't there be shame generation. if you've got an STD? Can, can we draw the line at STDs? Can we do that one? I mean, can we at least have that one where ladies and gentlemen, if you have an STD, does that not rule you out from talking about how hot you are? Can we, can we say that one? I mean, how can we talk about your sex appeal when you have a sexually transmissible disease? Can, can we can we name that one? I think that's fair. I mean, does that disqualify you from calling yourself sexy? Can we all agree on that one that, hey, you should be ashamed if you got an STD? Can we do that? Is that one off limits too? But I mean, how do you change the conversation though? I, I, I don't know how you do that. No, I'm, as females, you all supposed to tell us. These are conversations that have to take place among women. Females have to hold each other accountable. And that's not happening yeah. today. Females let each... Black women as a group are so cliquish and support each other in every bit of nonsense and foolishness. Black women do not condemn each other's behavior unless it's something responsible. That's the insane part of it. I want to get married. Girl, you're doing too much. I'm pregnant by who? I'm not really sure. Well, girl, the Lord will provide. Good for you. Have that baby. This is how ass backward things are in black society now. It is it's bizarro world. And what I'm saying is that as and what makes it worse is as a group of females, every black female is looking for a way to exclude or excuse herself from having to have a responsibility on it. But you know the reason for that? Can we just be honest with the reason why black women as a group do not hold each other accountable? the statistics I gave out earlier. How are you going to hold anybody else accountable over an STD and you're walking around with syphilis or chlamydia or herpes or hepatitis? How, how are you going to be enthusiastic about that? You're not going to tell us you got it, but you're not going to hold anybody else accountable either. How are you going to hold anybody else accountable about their bastard babies and you got two? How are you going to hold them accountable for dating this dusty ass Negro over here? And here you got a damn laundry list of dudes. I, I mean, you couldn't walk through Walmart without three or four guys snickering when you walk by. Can we just be honest? The reason the females don't hold themselves accountable is because so many of them know they're guilty. That... If we got 10 black women in a room, do you realize that we could not get 10 black, not at random, 
We could not choose 10 black women at random who do not have STDs or a bastard baby. Now, it's one thing to do something like, okay, I got a speeding ticket, or even, I'll give you, I've been to jail. I'll give you that one. Unless you're serving a life sentence, jail is temporary. I'll give you that one. I'll spot you jail. Don't nobody do that. I'll spot you jail. I can't spot you herpes. That's permanent. I can't spot you a bastard baby. That's permanent. So if we can't give a pass, I'm talking about the things that are permanent. And could we get 10 random black women in the room without having at least four of them? And I'm being conservative now without at least four of them disqualifying themselves with one of those things. But here's the deal. It was that way. So why did it change? It used to be a point in time that you could do that. So, so what's different today versus yesterday? Why do you think it's different? I'm the guy. I I really don't know. I don't I don't know why women change. I don't. I mm -hmm. I don't know. First, you said the civil rights generation. But. Again, I still don't know why there was a mindset shift, though. I don't know what changed In that. black society, black it women, existed. we had a huge influx of white women after integration who came and actually did the unthinkable. They actually started having conversations with black women. And black women felt so blessed that white women were not screaming and cursing and spitting on them that they actually got it into their heads that, quote, we are sisters. And white women started selling them sexual liberation. Which for white women was a way of destabilizing white male power. Black women have no power to destabilize white male power. The only thing they could do was destroy the black home. So white women got the destabilization of white male power. Black women got lifetime single. And then when they got into their 40s and 50s, they said, hey, this ain't cool. I don't want to be single for life. But many of the white women they were listening to were lesbians. These women did not want a man for anything. And you, these black women are like, well, hey, I'm heterosexual. I'm, uh, can I get a man sometimes? And these white women are like, you don't need one. And they realize now it's a one-way trip. Now you got all these kids out here and you're devoid of the ability to teach them about these things, but you do have your bitterness and your anger. You do have that. So they've instilled their bitterness and their anger in their children and told them that don't be ashamed to repeat my mistakes. Just because you had a baby, that doesn't bring your value down. And I've got black females who will sit here on Facebook and say that garbage, but they'll be in my inbox talking about that's not true. Now, what do we do when these daughters have their mothers lying to them? They'll be in my inbox telling me the truth because they know I'm not going to go over that mess. They'll say the truth to me, but I'm watching them online and in public telling their daughters straight ball face lies. Well, well, Jason, I'll just tell you this, that, you know, in my little part of the world, you know, I try to talk to, you know, young girls and, you know, even have conversations with their mother. But a lot of times I'm disqualified from speaking on those things because I don't have children. I don't understand. So it, it's a cash 22. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I. I no, that's not true. I don't think so. I think that, I think well, that what no, happens. No, no, I've been told that. I don't agree with that. I'm just saying I've been told that. No, I don't no, agree with that. No, but I, I've been told. Well, we, we, we can't allow that lie to stand either. Let's go ahead and go through that, okay? Because I've been there before. People have tried that with me about kids, marriage, everything else. Okay, fine. Let's, 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 let's look at that because I don't want you to be scared or worried about that anymore, okay? Don't let people saying ignorant, dumb things override your intelligence. Let's, let's never let that happen. Okay, when they sit up here and say, well, I got three kids and you don't have kids, so you can't speak as a person who doesn't have kids. Now, 
the first thing that you're supposed to say in something like that is what does that mean? What does that mean? Thank you. Now listen to the silence on this phone. That's exactly what you'll encounter. Ask them, what does that mean? Now they may try to come back and say, well, what that means is that you don't understand my life. And you're like, well, no, I absolutely understand it because I have freedom that you don't have. And the men prefer me because I have freedom that you don't have. I can do things that you can't do. Now, number one, like I say, it's for me, it's I, I wouldn't talk to females who already got the kids and stuff. They're a lost cause. But for the ones who don't, that's where you have to focus your efforts. Somebody who's already got kids, I wouldn't waste no time talking to her. I wouldn't waste one second. You all see it on Facebook all the time. Bastard baby maker stumbles in the room with her tattoos and her big fat behind and talking stupid, they immediately get bounced. I'm not here to talk to you. You're a lost cause. You're lost. You're gone. You're already you're already done for. Can't raise the Titanic. You're done for. Too often as black people, we try to waste time on people who are not worth the effort. Too often we do that. We get with folk who have absolutely nothing going for them. Nothing at all. And we try to save them and stuff. And we have to do triage. We have to do triage. We really do. We can't waste one breath of life on people who ain't, who are not really serious about trying to get anything done. And if they're already a lost cause... And they've already made it clear they're dedicating themselves to the bat to the dark side. Let them don't waste your time talking to them. Now, somebody who doesn't have kids, you explain to them all the advantages of it. Those people are not going to argue with you. But if you are standing next to one of those kids and one of these dumbasses does try to jump in there, you ask them what does that mean, and then get them to name off for you all the pros. Of being a single mother. Let me ask you ladies a question on the phone here. Let's talk about disqualifiers. Do you believe that being a single mother disqualifies a female from her choice of men? I say yes. Yes, I, I would say, say yes. Yes. that yes came real shaky, Kim. I'll be back with you in a moment. <laughs> you, you you said that like somebody was like three single mothers, big fat mammies was standing in the room looking at you. Said, what you gonna say? <laughs> so we'll come back to you in a moment, yes. MK. Yes, I would say yes, a big yes because. I, you know, I come from a, an African culture, and in my culture, once you have one, only one baby out of wedlock, you are done. I mean, maybe if you are lucky, a man will take you, but most of the time, you are done. I have seen the most beautiful women just because they have they they made the mistake when they were like in the early 20s just because they made they made the mistake to have a, a, a child out of wedlock they were out of the market that's how it goes it's, uh, you are socially disqualified you know and you are known to be the easy woman men know know that they can you know enjoy themselves with, with you but they they won't marry you because it's about their honor and the reputation of their family. So they are not going to take a woman who is known to be easy. So, and also, they are once you become a single mother in my culture, you you automatically you become very humble because you know that you've done a mistake. So, I 
even bet that most of uh, single mothers from my country, if they would have to come in the U.S., in the U.S., they would be a lot better than even uh, women who, who don't have kids because uh, apart from that mistake they did maybe when they were young, they are fine, you know, they, yeah, they don't have attitude, they are ladylike, they are everything, so. Yeah. To me, it's a big yes, it's a disqualification. There is not even a debate about that. Do you ladies think the STDs disqualify a woman for her choice of men? Yes. Yes. Okay. Does it depend on the STD or just STDs, period? If you got a rap sheet... <laughs> I don't think it matters. <laughs> okay, I'm just checking. What she say? Well, hey, I just had to clap once, you know, so I feel like I'm all right. <laughs> But I would say it maybe depends if maybe some can be uh, curable. Yeah, but I'm just saying, uh, okay, but here's the thing, you know, getting gonorrhea is not like getting a cold, you know. You didn't get it by grabbing the wrong doorknob or somebody sneezed in a room, you know. You got it because you have a propensity for jumping on unprotected penises because that's just how you get down. And if you're that freewheeling with your vagina, you know, it's like a man needs to take that into account. If she admits to the yeah. one STD, she probably is, there are probably the three others that she's not talking about. Because that's a lifestyle too. Sexually transmissible diseases are a lifestyle. That's one of those messy things. It's like drugs. There's never, if you got somebody on heroin, he didn't just take heroin. He's done heroin, he's done weed, he's done a bunch of other stuff. If she got herpes, this heifer done had gonorrhea, Chlamydia, you know, she, 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 she's been through the ringer. She'll try to tell you it's just been once or twice. And even if it's only been once, she's done had a whole bunch of times that she risked having it. So even if she only had it once, she had a whole bunch of other times that she risked it and, and didn't get burned until the time she finally did. And do you want to be the guy who's gambling on the female who will keep doing that until she finally does get burned. That's the question right there. Do you all believe that age disqualifies a woman from having her choice of men? Yes. I would say depends. Oh hell. Depends of the age and also uh, yes it depends on the age okay I, w I wouldn't say disqualify but it reduced drastically uh, uh, you know the yeah. possibilities boy I'm telling you I mean uh, well thank you for your honesty uh, MK on that I do appreciate that um, Kimberly, I'll be right back with you. Back to you, MK, here. Now, when you say that it depends on their age, what age do you think it starts depending on? I think um, it's subjective. It's somehow subjective to men. I think some men would say, and also it's cultural. Some In some culture, a woman who is 25 is already too old a woman who is 29 is too old uh, not so it depends uh, okay too old for it what? can be 30 can too old be for what 30, 30. too old for what <laughs> to be married to, okay to, yeah, i'm not sure what culture i don't know what her. i don't know what culture you're referring to that says 25 is too old to be married i'm not aware of what that is <laughs> Now, you can't just go off here and just go grab every little oddball bush tribe that's been featured on National Geographic and say that, oh, they say out here in Borneo over here in this tribe that 25 is too old. It's like them, them folks ain't even got cell phones, so we're not worried about them. 
But what I'm talking about as far as who else would you be referring to? Okay, I would say I would say most of the time it's thirty, but it's it's also subjective from one man to another. But of course, I think if a man has to choose between a woman who is twenty five and a woman who is thirty five, he would go for the one who is twenty five. Well, here's the issue, though, MK. You say it's subjective, and the problem with saying that it's subjective is that you got dudes out here who will sleep with Pam Greer today, and she's, what, 60? Real talk. I mean, they looking at videos from the damn 70s of this woman. I mean, today, Pam Greer is sexy from the neck up. Kind of. Can we just be honest about it? So you got dudes who would gr jump on her if they had the opportunity. So if we say it's subjective to the males, well, we can't use that. You, know, you got necrophiliacs out here, so there ain't nothing too old for them. Okay, I would say at, at I, I, 40, you are, I would say that at 40 or 39, the probability for you to get married are so low. That's what I would say, but I'm not a man, so I don't know exactly. Okay, I know because I saw it on on your post, but um, I don't know what's going on in men's head to okay, to just about... take the thirty years as the the the, the baro, barometer to you know to disqualify or. That's why I, I say it's, it's kind of su subjective, but with a limit of 40, because 40 most of the time is the time that, you know. Well, here's my point, though. My, my, my point is that a 50 year old woman is not going to have her pick a man. No, that's, that's. A 40 true. year old woman is not going to have her pick of men. Yeah. A woman in her 30s is going to have a struggle. A female in her 30s early in her 20s and her late 20s she's gonna be struggling too a female in her early 20s has her pick yeah that's true we can all agree that in her 20 early 20s she can pretty much go where she wants to go and as you get older it gets harder the men start the, we start discriminating but we start discriminating because we have options now Especially as we get older and stuff, you know, our money works to our favor. If you're building up assets, it works to your favor to get attention. It gets even bigger if you're willing to date outside. But if you've got assets, you start having the ability to start calling hands in different ways. That doesn't work for females. Except for some of these old, you know, moist, sitting on the couch xbox playing you know fruit loop eating negroes out here who are looking for a female to take care of them now for those guys yeah but for the rest of us who, are, who aren't looking for a female to take care of us if a woman gets to 30 and she hasn't had if a woman gets to 30 and nobody has married her we start side-eyeing that because we understand that no nah, something's wrong here because if you were really all that hot, somebody would have taken you off the market in your 20s. If you, le if you were left on the shelf, there's something wrong with you. And of course you're going to say there's nothing wrong with me. Of course you're going to say that. But as we get older and stuff, we realize the females that we left sitting. And we came back and yeah, that heifer is still single at 35 and 38 and older. And we left her alone for a reason. So if, if a woman is in her 30s and hasn't been taken off the market, it's because there's something wrong with her. And the men are willing to have sex with her. Hell, they're willing to have sex with anybody. That don't mean nothing. But nobody is willing to take her off the market. <laughs> but that's terrible. <laughs> that's honesty. That's, that's life. That's honesty. 
I don't consider honesty to be terrible. Well, I guess if you're the female who's still on the shelf, I guess it's terrible. But, I mean, we just have to be, if you, hey, hey you can't, you can't fix a problem until you can face a problem. And if females understood that that's the way that we as men see them, maybe they would start taking their 20s a lot serious, more seriously. I think you just said um, probably one of the issues right there, Jason, is that women don't know that. They don't know that. No, when you all get past 27 is really the cutoff point where you start edging because now you're closer to 30 than you are to 20 officially. And we have to start looking at you differently. You've only got about 10 more years in the tank for kids. And unless you really got something hot going on, you are not our first choice. Now, the thing what you said about your friends before and stuff, well, they can get a man, they can get a husband. Yeah, but was she his first choice? Or is he some bummy ass dude who just has to take what he can get? Is, or is he an on point black man who has his choice of females and she was his first choice? Is that the case? Because let me tell you right now, Beyonce is hot as a firecracker. As soon as she dropped Blue Ivy, she fell off the radar. And that's why she had to put out that damn porno album just to sell a couple of albums. Baby, your body is tight, but you're a mammy now. It, it's time for us to move on. Oh, you can get some sex. You can get that, but nobody is lined up to marry you now. Kim Kardashian, same thing. Northwest, they might as well call it Southwest Hell because that's her chances of getting the white man now. That's her chances now. Unless she gets somebody who is below her, but she could have done that before. Once you have that kid, we are no longer getting, we are no longer getting the best anymore. We're getting the leftovers. And if she's made it to her 30s, and she's not married, we're getting somebody's leftovers. Now we can call it what we want to. We can call it what we want to, but we're getting somebody's leftovers. And a man who actually has means and knows his worth, he's not gonna sell it for nobody's damn leftovers. He's not gonna do it. Not as but his Jason, first I, choice. I don't know that that black males or females really are just as pressed to get married as pre previous generations either. That's not. Do you, I mean, yes. I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, there was a study that's been done and whatnot. And I talked about this before. I mean, it was on NPR and whatnot that black women are the hold up in black society for getting married today. Black men are more ready to get married than black women. And that is why black men have a higher marriage rate. Black women are out here, and I don't know, like I say, it's, we have this game that's going on among the females where they're playing this, oh, I'll get married when I want to, and then they wind up getting married to something that, if they are able to get married, they're getting married way late and getting married to somebody they really didn't want to be married to, but that's because they suffered Gary Coleman syndrome. Now, Kim, you're old enough to remember Gary Coleman on different strokes. Uh, MK, I don't know if you remember Gary Coleman. Everybody remembers him, but I don't know if you remember him from the show. And if you remember, you know, Gary Coleman, there was this big blow up with his parents and whatnot. They stole a bunch of money from him and things. And so he just, when Different Strokes was over, Gary just wanted to take some time away. What people do not know is that Gary Coleman got offered a bunch of TV shows after Different Strokes. He got offered a bunch of them. He turned them all down. And he explained later why that was. He said that I felt that I was popular enough that I could just, you know, take some time away. And that when I came back, the people would still be there and they'd remember me. And what he found out is that's a lie. The people move on very quickly. People move on very quickly. And we have a problem with that Gary Coleman syndrome among the females to a large degree. They think that, 
Well, I can do whatever and they'll still be waiting for me. He'll, they'll wait up for me. Let me just go ahead and do this now. And then they get to their 30s and say, Okay! Well, kind of got ragged out and beat up by Ray Ray and Pookie. That, eh, that kind of got old. I got bills to pay now. I done racked up a bunch of damn bills from Pookie and Ray Ray. We got a bunch of mess going on. Uh, who's ready to take me off the market? Because you see, in her 20s, she was used to the idea of this never-ending stream of men throwing money and making overtures and, oh, I want to marry you and stuff. And they think that that stream will still be there when they get in their 30s. It's one thing to know that you've got an ability. It's another thing to think you can abuse it. And now it's being abused. Well, I'm hot now, so I can just... I can just go goof off for the next 10 years. They'll still be there when I get back. They'll still be there. They'll still be there. So they're waiting until they're 40s now and whatnot, but not because they want to. ABC didn't have a, a, a nightline special with a bunch of black women down the street and around the block because men are not available. It's because the men don't want them. But we're not allowed to have an honest conversation about what disqualifies you. And if the truth could be told in that auditorium, you know, there's something to be said for, they needed somebody from the military in that auditorium to just be honest about it. They had Steve Harvey sitting up in there lying to them. They had Hill Harper trying to sell a damn book in there lying to them. They had Sherry Shepard and Jackie Reed in there lying to them. Ladies, do you know what I would have told those women in that auditorium? I would have got run the hell out of there. Everybody, let me tell you what I would have told them. I would have told those women, 90% of you can get up and walk out of here right now. You're lost. There's nothing that can be done for you. It's over. There's no reason for you to even be here. It's over. You had your shot. You blew it. You've committed a fatal mistake. You will never recover from it. You have disqualified yourself. Because guys like me, who are upwardly mobile and single, I know I can do better than you. I know the pickings are slim, but I know I can do better than you. That's what I would have told them. I would have told them, 90% of you wasted your time coming here tonight because there's no hope for you. You're already damned. There's no hope for you. You made foolish mistakes in your 20s, and those mistakes are now going to haunt you for the rest of your life. And the reason that you're here tonight in your 30s and 40s is because you want your 20s back. You want to redo. You want to do over. As they call it in golf, you want a mulligan. You want a do-over. And you can't have one. You blew it. You had your shot and you blew it. You blew it. There's no helping you. There's no hope for you. And 70% of you are going to die single. <laughs> Well, if we actually had some honest damn conversations in black society, maybe we'd stop this cycle. But well, I'll, that's not going to happen. We don't have these honest conversations. That's the issue. We are now. Going back to what I was saying, we, we don't have those conversations. We are now? Um, yeah, yeah. But are we preaching to the choir? I don't know. Right now. We, Jason, got, we I have, have hundreds a question of people. for you. We have hundreds of people listening, so... It's more than just us, but go ahead, MK. Yes, I wanted to ask you, do you think that the women you were talking about that can just come come at your place and, you know, do whatever you want? Do you think, okay, do, do they have uh, children, daughters? And if so, do you think they teach they, their daughters how to, you know, how things are and how not to, uh, to, yeah, how things are for women 
nowadays and things like that. Okay, I'm not sure which women you were referring to when you said the ones Okay, I was you you, about. you you gave a, an example earlier telling us that you could just call like a dozen of women who could just come oh yeah them. Place. yeah th so that, that's I what I'm wanted to know no those are the ones who are disqualified yes I wanted to know because yes if, you if said all that they I were want disqualified is... but I wanted to know do you know do you, if they have kids do you know if they teach their daughters how you know how to half behave ass. for the future half ass because they never actually finished learning they never actually learned, and that's why they spend so much time around me. Because, you know, at least I'll give them the game, because they never actually had it, and they spent their life trying to live in denial of it, and fight against it, and pretend that it's not relevant to them, and it is. But, yeah, I mean, the ones I was talking about, they got kids. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they're they're disqualified. But if I wanted somebody over here, here's the thing. They're disqualified, so they're trying to, they are now in their late 30s and 40s and 50s. Yes, I got some females in their 50s. And they're trying to develop offsets now. And an offset is what you develop when you're substandard. If a man doesn't have six-pack abs... Gaining money becomes an offset. He doesn't have he doesn't have the kind of body that makes a woman stop and say oh, but he's got a bank account that makes her stop and say oh. He's got an offset. Ladies, listen very carefully out there, ladies. Your mammy and your grandmammy and your aunts lied to you. There is no offset for a baby. There is no offset for an STD. There is no offset for a bad attitude. There's no offset. Those things are fatal. Those things are fatal. And you all have been lied to your whole lives and told that you can develop an offset. Well, if I learn how to cook, I can mess off my 20s. And when I get to my 30s, I can offset all these bastard babies by being Susie Homemaker. But you have to understand, children are worthless to a man without a suitable wife. So the, 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 the Miss Manners, you have to be that to qualify to have his children. Now, Pookie and Ray Ray, that's a Negro with nothing to lose. And so many of these females waste their lives chasing after guys, chasing permanent mistakes with guys who have nothing to lose. He's a guy with absolutely nothing to lose. When you get with Mr. Responsible, he's got something to lose. He's got something to lose. So in his situation, he's got to look at it differently. Because he's got things that could go wrong for him in way bad ways so you sitting up here saying well i got kids but whoa hold on a second you, 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 you're, you're messing up my lifestyle well but i can cook i can clean but i would expect you to do that anyway so that isn't a offset that's a requirement a woman can say i don't require a man to be rich and driving a Lamborghini. I don't require him to be spending a thousand dollars a week on me. I don't require that. But fellas, if 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 you got the beer gut action going on, that BMW 8 series is an offset. You got a superficial problem, you you can develop a superficial offset. Having STDs, that's not a superficial offset. That's that's not a superficial problem. That's a serious one, and it's a permanent one, and it's a constant, it's a constant life-changing one. There is no offset for constant life-changing. There is no offset for that.
So what can we do differently? Let's not do that yet. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. Okay. Do you all believe that abortions are a disqualifier? Yes. yes. Why is it that these conversations don't take place among black women now? Why does she have to come here to a guy like me to have this? Why is it that black women are not lined up? Why is it nobody took Oprah to task for not having this kind of conversation? Why is it that didn't happen? Why is it it never happens? Again, the truth and reality for most is a hard pill to swallow. And we just don't live in the, the time frame and the culture where we deal with true reality. I mean, just look at reality TV, it's fake. So everybody expects a level of fakeness. That's why there's only a certain type of person that can follow your Facebook page and follow you and listen to you. And, that, and most of that, and I would say most of that is attributed to people who can accept the truth and the harsh truth and how it applies to their lives. But most people, and I won't even say black people, but most people in general do not want to accept reality and, and deal with the truth. And that's why we seek escapism, television, radio, all of those things are to take us away from reality. So you telling me what you're telling me tonight, I may not want to hear that, but it's the truth and I need to hear it. That's why we go to church and we sit up on these pulpits and preachers preach around everything but the truth so I mean this is just not the culture anymore to deal with reality period I talk to guys I talk to them all the time about the fact that as men, we're supposed to be leaders, and I don't care if you were raised by bastard baby makers or not. If your mammy never told you this, and you didn't have a father to give you the game, I'm telling you that your job yes, as a male I'm is to sure. lead, and your job as a male is to build. That is your responsibility, and that you will not have the respect of women, your society, your children, or anyone else if you are not doing that. I, I, I take that message to the guys, whether they wish to hear it or not. I talk to men about that. It is imperative that the females talk to each other about that. Whether they want to hear it or not, because we assume too much too often. Too often I keep hearing that where we can't talk to other females about that. And I think what it really comes down to is that a lot of y'all don't want to talk about it because you have this sisterhood of failure where you just say, well, that's her being her. Let you do you, me do me, and hopefully everything will work out okay. We keep doing that. As females, y'all keep giving other females a pass and say, well, that's just her life. Okay, but she's screwing up kids. She's having children and she's messing them up. A person doesn't have a right to do that. Nobody has a right to do that. It's one thing to support people when they're going through a hard time. It's another thing to support people when they're going through a hard time because they're messing up the world. Now that's where we become wrong when we start supporting them. Now, what are you all going to do to change that? I mean, that's a good question. Um, how, how do we educate, you know, the masses of, um, you know, black women 
I mean, you pose a good question. I don't know if I have the answer. Now that's scary. If we know what the problem is, but the females cannot sit down and articulate what the answer is. And only the females can do this. That's scary. Well, I mean, the answer is dealing with the harsh truth, but how do you communicate that tr no, truth dealing, across dealing, the dealing with the harsh, you know, Dealing with the harsh truth is not an answer. Dealing with the harsh truth is a condition. But dealing with the but harsh... But how do you communicate that to... To the, I mean, how do you save a generation? I don't know. I guess the real question is, what are you going to do to go to war against those who are contaminating your, who have not contaminating, who have destroyed your image as black women? I guess that would be the real question. What would be the answer to doing that? Yeah, I don't have that answer. I I mean, I think you start in your own your your own circle, your own community. But I think it has to be a broader movement than that. I don't think so. If you're doing it on your block, and if I'm doing it on my block, and if MK is doing it where she is, if if everybody is doing it where they are, then that makes a huge difference. If everybody's doing it where they are, that makes a gigantic difference. It makes a huge difference. We, we so underestimate, you know, we so underestimate our power as individuals. We so underestimate that. I didn't, I didn't just wake up one day and say, hey, people listen to me. Let me go say this. I didn't do that. I was just a guy who was frustrated as hell. And I got up and said something. And I didn't let people shut me up. And that's how we got where we are today. It's not because I was being listened to from day one. It was because I was not being listened to. And that's what made me get up. And I couldn't do everything. I still can't. Hell, I can't even do. I don't think I've changed 5% of anything. But the 1% or 2% that I can change, I'm going to change it. And if I do my 1% or 2% and you do yours. And MK does hers and all these other people. If, if everybody does what they can do. That's what changes everything. Not waiting on one person to come along and be the magic bullet and be our savior. Black people are so stuck on saviorism. If we say, you know what, I'll do everything I can do. Man, if we do that, that's what changes everything. That's what changes things. Problem is we're waiting on somebody else to come along and do it for us. Because we're, we're looking for a way to not have to make them feel bad about what they're doing. We want those people to not feel bad about what they're doing. I go into everything. Everything I post, I go into every conversation, every post, every comment, every broadcast, 7 a.m. I go into these things with the expectations that I am going to make enemies today. Not that I'm going to make friends, but that there are people who like me or at least think they like me right now. And after I post this, they ain't going to be able to, they're going to be permanently offended at me. And I do it. I don't do it in spite of that. I do it because of that. I 
I don't look for offensive things to say. I look for truthful things to say. But I don't let the fact that I know it may make enemies stop me from saying it. Most of what's truthful will make you enemies. Most of what's truthful will do that. The real question is, do you have the courage to face that? Or are you trying to spare people's feelings because you think that that's going to... That that's the most noble thing to do. That Well, I don't want anybody talking about my mistakes and my shortcomings. So I just won't talk about theirs. And that will make sure that I stay off the hook. And right now we have a situation where. Can I just be honest with everybody here for a moment. About this right now. Everybody, do you understand that if you can contaminate, you know, you all are aware that, you know, when you conquer a people, you have either, you either annihilate them completely or you kill the warrior class and subjugate the women and children. You're all aware of that. But do you all realize that there's a third option? You can leave the warrior class right where they are. If you can contaminate the women... You either kill the men or you contaminate the women. And do you understand that they have successfully, we have to just say what it is, it's success, they have succeeded at contaminating black women as a group. Where 20% of your black males have herpes, but 50% of your females do, they've contaminated your women. Everybody wants to talk about Israel and for sterilization they're not talking about what black folk are what 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 people are sitting up here making lifestyle choices to do right here nobody wants to talk about that because then you have to face the facts that the demon in the room is is you nobody wants to face the demon in the room do you understand the tremendous psychological and human toll that that takes? Do you understand the human toll that that takes? That takes a tremendous human toll. And I'm telling you that the reason why single mothers as a group routinely fail at raising children, but single fathers routinely succeed is because we have a situation where at no time have we been able to face the truth about these things and repair the damaged psyche of the females. They're far more sensitive to these types of psychological loads than men are, and their psyche is damaged as a culture, as a group. Their psyche is damaged. And nobody knows how to tell, to get the other people fully psychologically prepared because you have people with women with damaged psyches raising sons and daughters and damaging their psyche now it becomes a pattern where you're being told that you're forbidden to speak the truth on these things and now you have a situation where the majority of your black females are dying single and the ones who are they're having husbands but they don't have men they're just taking whatever male will take them. Do you understand the huge human impact, the human toll that that takes? Does anybody understand the human costs? Does anybody understand the gravity of that? Where you have a family, a whole, I say family, but you have groups of people who are kinfolk like that and simple things. Simple things like not dying alone. We don't have that. Simple things. Do you all understand the damage that that's doing to the third and fourth generations of children? Do you understand what that's doing to them? Yes. Where they are now saying that they don't care. 
So what if I got three babies by the time I'm 19? I'm, it gets even worse than that. You got girls in their 20s. So what if I never get married? My mom died alone. My grandmother died alone. And the problem is that this is killing them inside. It is killing them inside. Because that is counter to everything that a female is. A female is built from the ground up to be nurturing and caregiving. And we have taken these females in black society and we have told them, no, we will give you nothing to care for and nurture. You will raise, you will keep these children like goldfish and prevent them from being, from dying from exposure or malnutrition. But we are going to let you grow old knowing that you are just going to be alone. Do you know what a huge a huge destruction of a person's psyche that does to them. Most black women today are screaming inside. Not not crying, they are screaming. They are absolutely... What do you think the weight gain is about? What do you think that's about? What do you think the the whoring, the attention whoring and the twerking and all on Facebook and the STDs, what do you think that's about? What do you think that's about? Why do you think that's going on? Why do you think that the attitude of I don't care, why do you think that is? When a person tells you that I don't care to something that is life altering, I don't care. This is life altering. I don't care. They're telling you that they've been broken. That person is telling you that I've been broken. And I don't have any fight left in me. I don't expect tomorrow to be any better than today. Somebody like that shouldn't have children. And yet, 75% of our children are being raised by individuals who are on a suicide mission. 75% of your black children are raised by single mothers. Individuals, their psyche is broken and shattered, and their spirit is broken. And they have just resigned themselves. Is They're getting earlier and younger at this now. They've resigned themselves that it's just over. It's just over. This is the kind of thing that I want people to understand. This is this is this is what you're asking the males to choose from. You're asking them to make choices like that. And as females, you all should be able to at least be able to come together and say, wait a minute. I can show you a whole group of on-point black women, and that's not happening. You can find one here, and you can find another one way over there, and then if you wait a few weeks, we can find another one. You are not going to survive as a people with your redeemable members of society so vastly spread out. That's part of the reason that I did 7 a.m., to call everybody together. Because we're making all kinds of false assumptions that we shouldn't be making. We are claiming that there's a naivete that is not actually there, that there's an ignorance or lack of knowledge that is not actually there. These people know exactly what they're doing. They're making decisions. And they're making decisions based upon their experiences, their environment, and the fact that they are ill-equipped to do better. They feel completely and totally ill-equipped to do any better. And I want everybody to understand the reason why I speak to these things is because we are not going to survive as a people with females with a shattered psyche to the point that you have a 50% herpes rate. You're not going to survive with that. 
a 50% bastard baby rate. I don't care who I sleep with, who I give my womb to. I don't care who I lay down with. 80% of the men care about who they sleep with. Only, but 60, but 45% of the women don't. That's contamination. And this lie that keeps getting spread that you will be eternally valuable. That don't worry. You can mess off your good years because all your years are good years. That's white supremacist talk. White supremacy says that if I do it, it's okay because I did it. I can kill these people, rape, maim, pillage, murder. It's all right because I'm white and I'm the one who did it. And when you say, well, I'm, I'm a black female and I'm, I'm sexy, this thing ain't never going to get old. You're, you're practicing white supremacist pathology. That because you did it, it's going to be okay. And I'm here to tell you all, ladies, it's not right and it's not fair. But understand something. The men are not going to tell you any of the things I told you tonight. They're not going to tell you any of that. And you know why? Because if nothing else, you're useful for sex. So why would they tell you something that makes you less agreeable for sex? Why would they do that? Even if he knows he's not going to keep you, why would he not want to have you available for sex at least? Why would he do something like that? Most of these dudes are out here telling you all straight out to your face lies. Straight out lying to you. Knowing they're lying. But keeping you in their back pocket for sex. And I'll go even further than that. Some of these guys are getting you pregnant and getting you STDs and are stringing you along for years because that's a way of imprisoning you. Oh, I'm telling all the man whore secrets now, ain't I? It's not accidental. A lot of these guys are out here doing it on purpose. They're trying to handcuff females with these babies. They're telling you they're going to marry you and they never will. Or they marry you knowing full well they're never going to keep you. He gets married to you. Don't do a damn thing but lay up. You all get divorced. As soon as he divorces you, he goes off and gets a job and gets a house. And you're like, well, this nigga didn't do it when he was with me. <laughs> Why wasn't he trying to build anything when he was with me? Why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? He wasn't going to get up and do nothing until he had to. Men will not tell you any of the things I'm telling you all tonight. They're not going to tell you that. Men will look you in your eyes and lie to you. Can we be honest about that, ladies? Because yeah, the ladies will throw their hands up and say, that's right, you go, you tell them, they sure do. But wait a minute, you knew that Negro was lying to you when he was talking to you. So don't sit up here and try to congratulate me now. You knew he was lying when he said it. He had two kids by two other women. You knew full well that Pookie was a liar. Well, he's he makes me feel like I got sex appeal. Mr. Boring does not appeal to me on that level. That's because you're operating on a dirt level. And the men men who are about something don't uh, don't go after your sex appeal. A man who is about something goes after your intellect. But most females do not appreciate their own intellect. So Pookie and Ray Ray get access because the females want somebody to give them cheap attention. As opposed to hard work attention. Intellect takes hard work. And I'm saying that cheap attention gives cheap rewards. Easily disposable rewards go to easily ex disposable people. And a lot of you out here are disposable because you've made yourself that way. I want this to stop. I don't want another generation of untouchables. 
We have, we have, we now have two generations of black women who are untouchables. They're untouchables. Can we be honest about it and call it what it is? Yeah, you got some who are okay, sure. But the problem is they're not the rule. And looking for them is, is like deep sea diving for buried treasure at the bottom of the Laurentian abyss. Look it up. Looking for them is like diving to the deepest point on the earth. Which would be down the ocean. Yes, 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 I know, but anyway. Yes, I know. There's somebody out there saying, wait a minute! Deepest part of the world, wait a minute, what did you say? Yes, 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 I know. Anyway, my point is... It should be very, very easy to have that. But when we got white men walking into the room and everybody bows down, that's not good. That's a bad sign. That's a bad sign. And I don't want another generation of females who bow to non-black men who sit up here and are trying to, con who have to bully people into spending time around them. I don't want that. I, I, I believe that as a black man, we should have the prettiest, most intelligent, capable, most astute, virtuous, dependable, best women on the planet we're Africans damn it we're Africans and Jason I think we have that we we just need to cultivate it and I and I think those need to be the, those are the women that need to be in the forefront we we have it it's there I don't it's not it. enough of us, of course. Yeah, I mean, there's not enough of us because here's the problem, Kim. You know, the, you know what the real problem is? Kim is on point. MK is on point. Jason Black is on point. How many kids we got between the three of us? None. None. Now, none how is it we got two black men, and one, two black women and one black man, and none of us have any children between the three of us? Not a one. But the ignorant are breeding like roaches. Now, part of that goes to that we actually give a damn who we have children with because children are the most important decision they ever make. I understand that. But when we say that, you know, we're out there, you know, here's the problem, Kim. The cure for cancer is out there. But right now, the cure for cancer is worthless. You know why? Because we can't find it. The cure for cancer is worthless if you can't find it. But you know what, Jason? It's like a football field. You've got whatever you deem as a good black man and a good black woman. We're on opposite ends of the football field, and we've got the ba bastard baby makers, the whores, the sluts, the whatever degenerate men in the middle and they blocking and can't none of us get to each other you know what I mean there's not a place where we can get to one another so they are in the way you know, Honestly, we have to play the shell game the we have to play the shell game and we have to sit up here and pick over all these false leads and all these imposters and get past all this detritus to be in the same place you know I mean you you just said it and not everyone, and when you say imposters, imposters come in the form of women, you know, I mean, men get a bad rap, but imposters do come in the form of women too. And, you know, there are some guys that, you know, they get taken on the ride with, you know, a lot of these women that they think have good intentions and they feel like will be good, you know partners along the way in life and you know it goes both ways but again there's the our the intelligence in our society is just not pull, push to the forefront so we gravitate toward the wrong things I, I unfortunately and I mean let's just be honest a lot of the women and a lot of the men they are very skilled 
you know, when you don't have a lot to offer, you, you, you become very skilled in offering up your best asset. Well, whatever and, you think is your best asset. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's subjective, but. If your best asset's between your legs, you ain't got very much. I agree. If that's the best thing you got in this world, boy, you're a pretty poor individual. But gravitating toward excellence and finding excellence. I mean, I think your forum is a definitely a place where that exists, but that's just one place. You know, where where are the rest of them? Well, like, like you I asked said. me earlier, where are these women? I can't I can't point you into the direction where they are. I can name off a few that I think that are okay, but there's not a you know they're not huddled up in a meeting place somewhere. Um. How do we change that then? Because we can sit here and complain about Pookie and Shaniqua and all the garbage out there and stuff, but if the intelligent people are never meeting each other, we really are doomed. Certainly. If all we can do is keep saying. Where are the sensible black women? Where are the sensible black men? Well, here's the other thing is that, by the way, I, you said, you know, the good black women and the good black men are on the opposite sides of the football field. What constitutes a good black woman? Now, I, like I say, I think that's subjective, right? I mean... It can't be, though. But it can't be. Now, that can't be subjective. It can't be that a good black woman is whatever you think it is. Because by that token, Nicki Minaj is a good black woman. No, I wouldn't say that. Okay, but if it's subjective, that means it's relative to whoever you're asking. Subjective but it means is. subject to. Subject, subject to what? Well, subject to the standards of the person that you're asking. And like I said before, you got dudes who will chase Pam Greer. And to be totally honest with y'all, Pam Greer don't even like black men like that. But you know what that, okay, so then you bring up a good point. Maybe we don't have a standard, so no one knows really what they should be looking for. I think this is my standard, but maybe that's the wrong standard and vice versa. You know, maybe, maybe we don't have a standard as a people that we should be looking for. Well, let's start here then. What is a good black woman? I got two black women on the phone right now from both sides of the world. What is a what constitutes a good black woman? Um I would, to me a good would like to go on Kimberly if you want to go ahead MK. Okay. Uh, to me, I would say a good black woman would be a woman who is, who has her head on her shoulder. Okay, let me let me Please. explain something here, folks. Before we get yes. started, if you're going to answer this question, please do not use jargon or metaphors. If a woman okay. if a woman has a if a woman is breathing, she <laughs> obviously has a head on her shoulders. Um. <laughs> Other than that, we call that a headless cadaver. So, just in, in the interest of expediency, what is a good black woman? Um, a good black woman is a woman who is intelligent, who is ladylike, who has ambition, who is assertive. Um, oh, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Stop, 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 stop. Now, you're giving out adjectives, and that's good. But I think one of the problems that happens when we give out adjectives, we do not actually explain what those adjectives mean. Now, you said a woman who is intelligent. What does intelligent okay. mean? To me, intelligent means who can have a conversation, who knows things other than things that are on TV. So you can have a rational conversation about any a political topic or anything else, something about life, and she can answer properly. Not, not 
the answer you would like to hear, but something that has has some sense. Okay, a woman who is ambitious. Uh, I mean by that, who has something going on for her, herself, who has, uh, who knows where she's going. She has, she has a plan for her life apart from having kids. And you know, <laughs> a woman who is uh, ladylike. So she's, she doesn't have attitude. She knows how to behave in public. She's not loud. She, uh, yeah. And assertive, I would say a woman who, who isn't too shy, who knows how to converse, to have a conversation. Yeah. All right, Kimberly, now what do you consider to be a good black woman? I would say specifically a woman that understands her place in society and as a woman, but also understanding the black plight, the black struggle, um, being knowledgeable of self, and really able to take the the history of who she is and connect it, you know, in modern day terms, but also, you know, being feminine, uh, being honest. I think those basic ethics that you would expect from anyone, but I think being a good black woman is truly being, you know, connected to what we're calling black empowerment, understanding that, understanding the role that she needs to play with, you know, a, next to her husband, if she chooses to get married, et cetera. So, um, cause I think that defines things more specifically when you understand that and you understand your role next to a black man. Well, also, I and being able to being able to execute, execute not just say it in words, but embody it and actually live it, live it, do it, breathe it. Um, but I, you know, good. I th I think just basic ethics. But I think when you say specifically a black woman, understanding you know how to nurture and raise her family, how to nurture and support her significant other. And I think taking that historical, you know, past and putting it into the present, that to me. And I think with that, you get intelligence. With that, you get honesty. I think you get that with having that understanding of who you are. Yes, I wanted to add also a good woman, a woman who isn't selfish, who knows that she doesn't come always first. And once she has a family, she has to take care of the family. And it's not only about her, it's about her family, it's about her community as well. So, yeah. Now, did you all notice what I didn't say here? You noticed that I didn't try to tender my ideas or thoughts about what makes a good black woman because men, right. because men shouldn't do that women should not be trying to speak on what makes a good black man and black mm -hmm. men should not try to speak on what makes a good black woman and the reason for that is because you were saying before that it's subjective well here's the problem the problem is it'll be it'll also be subjective to pookie and ray ray and Pookie and Ray Ray, because they're black men. Well, if black men get to speak on what makes a good black woman, here comes Pookie and Ray Ray, or the lames who want black women to take care of them while they're surfing plenty of fish, or whatever. They're going to say that a good black woman is a woman who goes to work every day, takes care of the kids, while he sits on the couch and plays Xbox. So 
So that's why black men cannot speak on that because invariably you will get hoes coming in trying to say what makes a good black man. And the hoes, of course, are going to come up with the hood rat garbage. And you're going to have dusty Negroes talking about what makes a good black woman. And of course, they're going to be on maximum dustiness. So that's why men cannot speak on that. Now, what makes a good black man? First of all, a black man should be about empowerment. What does empowerment mean? Empowerment simply means having the ability to do what you need to, when you need to, as you want to. Notice I didn't say do what you want to. Doing what you need to be able to do when you need to be able to do it, how you want to be able to do it. Now you notice that last one, I can do what I want, when I want, how I, what I need, when I need, how I need. You see, real freedom isn't being liberated from your responsibilities. Real freedom is having the power to fulfill your responsibilities on your terms. That's real freedom. That's freedom. Freedom is having the ability to do for your family on your terms. That's freedom. And that takes power. So as a man, what makes a real man is an individual who pursues empowerment, not that pookie and Ray Ray garbage of excitement. Not a guy who gets a car with big rims, but a man who provides so that you have a car, not so you can pursue some childish fantasy of, oh, I want to be seen by the girls, but he's gotten you a car as part of your life with him. So that this vehicle helps you to facilitate your life with him. We got to pick up kids. We got to go to the grocery store. We got things to do. And I got this for you because this facilitates your life with me. Nothing to do with you having these visions of you going down the street with your hair flapping in the breeze. Welcome to some grown up stuff. That's empowerment. And that is what a man is supposed to be pursuing relentlessly until he has it. A man is supposed to be intelligent. Now, what is intelligent? Now, MK gave the stock answer that most people give, which is, well, not just talking about stuff that's on TV or whatnot. Let me give you all the definition of intelligence. This is what you all really mean. It's what most people don't define that way. Don't say it that way, but this is what you really mean when you say intelligence. Intelligence is defined as being able to tell someone something that they don't already know. To be able to reveal and explain a piece of information, not an opinion, not an opinion, but information, a fact that a person, that the person that you're talking to does not already know. That is intelligence. Most people cannot find an intelligent mate. And the reason for that is because they cannot actually define what intelligence is. Somebody sitting up here running their mouth and blabbing at you for hours is not intelligence. A man who is able to teach you facts, not his opinion. We got all these churches where these pastors pretend that they're intelligent. And he ain't did numbers up there and run his mouth for two hours. You don't know one thing, one fact that you didn't know before you walked in that place. But he did a bunch of whole bunch of talking, so it sure sounded good. Intelligence is someone who can teach you something you don't already know. Now that you all know, there's someone who can teach you a 
fact that you don't already know. You see, a lot of females get angry with me, and the reason they get angry with me is because when I refute something, I bring my facts, and I've had a few of them try to go look it up to prove I was wrong. We're still waiting. I don't give my opinions, I just give facts. You don't like my herpes stats? Oh well. Try to prove them wrong. And when you come back angry as hell because you couldn't prove them wrong, you will come back with your opinion about why facts don't matter. And let me tell you, I don't want to be in the position to be in the person who is, who is arguing why facts don't matter. I don't plan on being that one. A man is supposed to have identity. What is identity? Identity is the ability to differentiate and value the differentiations between what you are and everything else identity is knowing the difference between a man and a rock identity is knowing the difference between an african and 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 everyone else and knowing why these things matter that is identity because without identity, you cannot have esteem, you cannot have pride, you cannot have self-respect. If you do not know who and what you are and value it. We throw that phrase around all the time. If we knew who what we are, we'd know what the hell we are. With the way they say it, we're Africans. But they cannot tell you what is valuable about it. They can't take that next step because they don't actually know. They don't actually know. We got a bunch of black folk and white in black society run their damn mouths. But they don't actually know what they're talking about and cannot explain to you the value of what they said. And this is why young people usually don't miss, listen to older black folk. Older black folk are very good for running their mouths. They can't tell you why what they're telling you is valuable. Can't explain it to you. A black man is supposed to be a builder. Now, what is a builder? MK, Kimberly, tell me, what's a builder? MK, what's a builder? A builder is a man who, who, is, who has accomplished some things in his life, who has goals. And who is who is trying to excel in what he does or what he's planning to do? That's what I would call a builder. And also, MK, it's a man. Yeah. Thank you, Kimberly. What's a builder? I think it's a man that's focused on either you know building a business, building a brand or really building his career and trying to provide for his family. All right, people, I'm going to give you the definition of a builder tonight. You will be able to take this anywhere you go in the world with you, just like I gave you the definition of intelligence. Just like I gave you the definition of identity, you will be able to take this definition of builder with you anywhere you go. And from this day forward, ladies, if you get wrapped up with a man who's not a builder, it's your own damn fault because you knew what you were looking for. And you just ignored it. A builder is a man who is able to construct or implement something of use, something utilitarian, something of value and use that was not there previously. Now, MK used the word accomplishment. But let's be specific about what constitutes an accomplishment in the form of a builder. A builder is a person who is able to bring into being something that is useful and utilitarian that was not previously there. Now, why is this important? Because you got a whole bunch of black men who got some sex yesterday, day before yesterday. Well, actually, no, no, no. It's, uh, well, we're, it's Monday now, Central Time, so Saturday. You got a whole bunch of black men who got sex Saturday. Didn't bring the female nothing. He's never built anything for you. He's never built anything for himself. He 
He has never established something useful that was not already there. Becoming an employee is not a builder. It doesn't matter how much money they pay you. You're not a builder. You're an employee. The guy with a hot dog stand is a builder. The NBA player for the Dallas Mavericks making millions a year is not a builder. The guy with the hot dog stand making $50,000 a year, he's a builder. He has established something of use and utility that did not previously exist. The basketball player, that position was there before he got there. He didn't make it. He didn't create it. And is going to be there if he falls dead tomorrow. Bunch of black men out here trying to sweet talk their way into some draws. Try talking females in the bed, telling these ladies that you don't need me to give you anything tangible other than sex. Now that's going to be tangible. But as far as anything else, you're wrong for saying that I need to bring you something tangible that you can use. You're wrong for that. Don't require me to be a builder. I shouldn't have to bring you something that you can use that was not previously there. Let me bring you something that I will tell you what the value is of it. It's been here the whole time, but I'll tell you what the value is of it. A person who takes something that was sitting right in front of you the whole time and tries to tell you that it has some new type of value even though it doesn't do anything different than it did before, that's not a builder, that's a con artist. A black man is supposed to be driven. A real man is supposed to be driven. He is supposed to have a life's goal that he is dedicating himself to that feeds him and he feeds on it every day he gets up and he neglects his woman for it oh i just offended a bunch of people a man is supposed to have something that he is dedicating his life to to the extent that he is neglecting his woman Because you see, if he's actually building anything, there are going to be times when his woman is not the most important thing. If his woman is the most important thing at all times, show me a man whose woman is the most important thing every day, and I will show you a man who ain't building a damn thing. But he's got some female talking about, that's right, he's a real man. He'll have a female saying that because he does that, he's a real man. And that's precisely the reason that you cannot allow females to define what constitutes a real man. If a female is a good mother, she will be neglecting her man. Now the females will break their arms, pat me on the back when I say that. Now, if I say that the man can neglect you, that's wrong. He ain't never supposed to do that. You can neglect the man for the children. That's right. He needs to understand. Well, guess what? You can get neglected for building. When your man is out here, and I'm not talking about some Negro who's talking about what he plans to do. I'm talking about if he is out here and he is building modern day pyramids, you know, for something like 7 a.m. or something like that, you are supposed to be behind him. You're supposed to support him. But you are supposed to also understand that as a builder, you will take, at times, you will take a back seat to what he's building. Beyonce is at times going to take a back seat to Jay-Z's, well, I guess he ain't building nothing, so never mind, that's a bad example. I can't really name a bunch of black men who are actually building anything, so it's hard for me to give you an example. Very hard for me to give you an example. I can't really think of that many black men who are actually trying to build nothing. I can't really think of that many. But if we did have hey, Jason, them, can I, that's can what I they'd be doing. Can I ask a question? No, you can cannot ask, ask question? any questions. 
I was being facetious. I know. If that's the case that we're supposed to be looking for builders and you just said it's not that many, then what is the what is the um what then what should should we be telling women then if that's the case what you just said. Okay. Every first of all, people need to be self-directed. That's the first thing. If everybody will stop sitting up here and looking for somebody else to give them some damn benefit before they do what they're supposed to do, then this problem would disappear tomorrow. Problem, you got too many females with their hands out looking for a man to trick off and bring them something, and you got too many males out here looking for females to give them rewards and respect without any type of benefit involved whatsoever. If the, if the women will simply make it a requirement. what You know what we need, y'all? We need a strike. We need a national strike in black society. I'm saying it. We need black women to go on strike against black men. And we need black men to go on strike against black women. And you are to hold out until you get what you are supposed to get. As a black man, it would be better for you to be alone than to be with a female who is not meeting the proper requirements. And as females, if you all as a group would actually adhere to that, you would have more... This problem of not having builders would disappear tomorrow. Men go where the sex is. And as long as these dudes can get sex and ain't building nothing and telling you that you're wrong for expecting him to build, not only telling you that you're wrong for expecting him to build something, but telling you that not only you should you give him sex, but you should be supporting him. As long as you've got females who are doing that, the guys are not going to change. As long as Pookie and Ray Ray get first dibs, the other 80% are not going to build nothing. Why should they? Pookie and Ray Ray didn't. And they got 50% of y'all with herpes. Pookie and Ray Ray didn't build nothing. Why shouldn't I just wait for you to get done with Pookie and Ray Ray? They didn't build nothing. Why are you making requirements of me? You you were in your 20s saying that a man doesn't have to build. Now that your ass is in a crack, now you want men to build. Men need to be consistent and so do the women. And we need everybody to say that this is the line and we're not going to cross this line except if the situation is suitable. And instead, you got strike breakers. Every time you get a group of black females who say, okay... This is what we want. You got Shaniqua and Bushika who are saying, oh good, that's less female competition. I'll come sleep with all you fellas. And then you got these dudes out here. Man, we're not going to sleep with no hoes. If the females are not coming correct, we're not going to do that. Here comes Pookie and Ray Ray. Damn what y'all talking about. I don't turn down nothing but my collar. And there's where the problem comes in. But ostensibly what needs to happen is there needs to be a, a hands-off policy. Because right now, as a group, as a group, black men are not bringing any type of leadership qualities or benefits to the table thus we are incapable of leading because there's no benefits to following us let me say that again for all you ignorant deadbeat dusty empty pockets out bummy negroes out there the reason why you're surfing on plenty of fish and sexually frustrated because the females won't talk to you the reason for that is because a leader cannot have followers when there's no benefits to following him. You can only be a leader when there are benefits to following you. A leader who does not give any benefits for following him is not a leader. A leader who has no benefits to following him is called a nomad. 
you see a leader takes you from point A to point B, which is your destination. The destination is the reward. A nomad ain't going nowhere. He's just walking. Now you're following him, but you're not actually following him to a destination. So you are not going to get the females to respect you as a leader when she knows full damn well you ain't leading her nowhere. You're just walking around in circles. You're just walking around in circles. So if I had my way, black women would not speak to a black man who was not building and there would be dead silence. There would be absolutely no response whatsoever to the dudes who ain't. But you all have to do it as a concerted or united effort. You have to do it as a concerted united front. And you can't have hoes sitting up here breaking the strike line. Aretha Franklin singing R-E-S-P-E-C-T and Nicki Minaj talking about looking my ass jiggle. She's breaking the strike line. She's breaking the strike line. So that's why I was saying before, if you all get together and, and, and do that, then that would be the kind of thing that would have you, uh, that would be the kind of thing that we'd be looking for. That'd be the kind of thing that we'd be looking for. And that's why I'm having you do this for tonight. Start holding other females accountable and be unapologetic and uncompromising about it. We need to have that. Because as females, the men will follow. The men will respond to you when you start acting like women. When you start acting like women who are worthy of a builder, the men will respond. When you start saying that you can't get any female company if you're not a builder then the men will immediately come to attention. But as long as MK says, I don't fool with you if you're not a builder, and Kimberly says, I don't fool with you if you're not a builder, but Bushika says, I'll, I'll fool with you. Broke, cracked out, ain't working, not building nothing, three bastard babies, that's okay, I got two bastard kids too. Or for the black men who are about something and whatnot, that's where they come in. I'm as a guy, I tell them, brothers, if nothing else, you know, you're supposed to be working on your assets 24 seven because the females may or may not be here, but the money is going to be there. Even if you don't have a female, you're supposed to be building your assets regardless. And this idea that we as males, I'll start building after I get a female that's backward. That's completely backwards. This idea that I ain't going to build nothing until the female shows up. That's wrong. It doesn't work that way. You don't sit up here and say, I'm not going to build anything until the female shows up. Until I get rewards, because a female is a reward to a man. Until I get a female who treats me like a builder, I'm not going to build nothing. If she doesn't give me the benefit of the doubt, I ain't built nothing. I'm not even trying to build anything. But if she doesn't give me the benefit of the doubt of being a builder, I'm not going to build anything. And we all know what happens then. As soon as the female gets with you, then you say, well, hell, why should I build anything? I got the cow, right? I'm getting the milk for free now. Why should I build anything? And as males, we have to hold you to that standard. That as men... You are not going to be able to sit here and say, oh, well. So the men need to sit on this side of the fence and say, we're not going to give any rewards to a female who is not worthy of a builder. And the females need to sit on their side and say, 
We are not going to spend any time with a man who's not building, but it begins with you actually understanding what that means. Because if you think a builder is a guy talking about his ambitions, you're totally wrong. A builder is not a guy who has plans. Do you notice that there's a difference between an architect and a builder? An architect is a guy who draws up plans. Do we call them a building company? No. We got too many women out here who claim they want a builder, but they don't even know how to define building. So some guy who can run his mouth all day about what he plans on doing, she gives him the benefit of the doubt. Hell, looks like a builder to me. With him telling you about what he gon' do. And making you feel bad because you haven't actually demanded proof. There are steps to building. And if he can't show you where he's accomplished any of those steps, leave him where he is. Now, if he can show you where he's accomplished some steps, he wants to have his own real estate company. Okay, what have you done? Do you have any skyscrapers? No. Do you have any apartment complexes? No. Have you bought your first property? No. Then what the hell are you building? Where is your proof that you're actually going somewhere? Now, he cannot have skyscrapers. He cannot have apartment buildings. He can even not have his first property. But if you ask him, what are you building? He should be able to show you a bank account with ten or $20,000 in it. This is the down payment for my first property. He should be able to show you a credit score of 650 or higher. I got my credit together. He should be able to show you his business, his registered LLC, S Corp, whatever, his registered real business in the field in which he says he's, he's building. He should be able to show that to you. Let me tell you, there is no argument at the Black Channel. When I told you all, you all saw the, saw the logos and everything else for Black Channel Films. You saw that a year ago. A year ago. 7 a.m. was finished filming a, oh, a year and a half ago. Over a year and a half ago. I, did, I wasn't sitting up here talking about I'm going to film a documentary. You all found out about Black Channel Films when you saw the first trailer, the first teaser for 7 a.m. That was when you saw Black Channel Films. That was your first time seeing it. Now, I already knew it was there. But I wasn't waiting for you all to pay me attention before I started filming. I went and started filming. I went and started building. And then I brought back to you what I had built. And then we can go from there. I wasn't asking you to give me the benefit of the doubt or to have faith in something. I started building first. And then I said, now you can put your faith in that. It doesn't require faith now. It just requires common sense. You can believe in what you see now. Now, a man who is not willing to show a woman what he's accomplished... That's not a builder, that's a con artist. And he may be conning himself. But it's, if you're in bed with him, he's conned you too. There is nothing wrong with a woman requiring a man to show some proof. That he is not just all talk and all potential. Potential is a dirty word. And you all have been told that potential is a sympathetic or empathetic or compassionate term. It has been so bastardized and abused, just like thick. It is now a word that is dirty. Damn potential. You tell him, bring me something I can see. Bring me your tangibles. Damn, you act like the bank. You damn right, because I'm investing something more valuable than money. I'm investing my time. Now, if all of you as females do the same thing, start checking your sisters on this. MK, Kimberly, start checking your sisters. Everybody else out there listening, start checking your sisters. When they start talking that foolishness, check them. Check them immediately. 
Don't let them go. Don't let them get any amount of distance with that. You check them right then, right there. Don't let them get anywhere. That's what you have to do as females. And as guys, we have to do the same thing. We got to check foolishness when we hear it. And not have... If women were working on being virtuous as much as they do trying to grab a male and if black men were working on building as much as we worry about having a female we would all have our acts together and we would have more of a pool of acceptable people to choose from. Agreed. We have such slim pickings and such a poor environment to choose from because everybody is trying to con everybody else into believing that they're doing something that they're actually not doing. And we all know that everybody's trying to con everybody else and we're sitting around pretending that, well, maybe this person is different. They look exactly like the one we just finished getting messed over by. We're going to give them the benefit of the doubt. I believe in giving the benefit of the doubt, except when there's no longer any doubt. Now you're not giving benefits. You're just being a fool. There's no longer any doubt. There's no doubt anymore. We need to stop that. So I think my, my answer to you, Kim, is that you females need to be alone. You all need to start supporting each other in being alone before, before you get three damn kids and an abortion and stretch marks and, 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 and your nipples are pointing south. You're supposed to be doing that before. You all are supposed to be a support group for each other for something intelligent and sensible. But black women don't support each other like that. They support each other when things go wrong. Black women don't support each other to hold each other up for something good to come along. They support each other when something stupid has been done. But don't feel bad about what you did stupid. There is no effort to support each other when doing something redeemable needs to be done. That doesn't happen. So you all need to start supporting each other and be a support system for that. Because you all don't have that as a group. You don't have that. You got baby mama support. You're a lost cause by the time you become a baby mama. You're a lost cause. You got herpes and syphilis support. You're a lost cause by the time you get there. You're a lost cause. Where you two are tonight, you know, that's where you need to be. That's where you need to be. And you know, more than anything else, if there's a female out there listening, I'm just one guy. I am just one guy. We need you as females. This broadcast tonight should be all females talking to each other. This broadcast tonight should be all females all talking to each other. That's what it should be. So why do we need the black channel? In reality, you shouldn't have, you shouldn't need guys like Tariq to do the game for you like that. And you shouldn't need guys like me. The females should be getting together with each other on their own with no males, no male input and no male interference. That the females should get together with each other. (laughs) 
So you guys should think about that. You should be thinking about, you know, what do I need to organize to do this among us? Because I'm just one guy. Kim, you could do it. MK, you could do it. Your English is fine. But that's the kind of thing that needs to happen. Because I can talk to the guy. We got plenty of guys out here talking. How do you think you ended up with Psycho Mayor? You got plenty of guys out here talking. And I understand there's a bunch of bull job out there too. But you know what? You got the Black Channel. There's some intelligence going on. You got Boyce Watkins. You got Tariq. You got sensible people out here. You have sensible options out here for the guys. The, the females, there's not even a place where you all can go where the conversation does not shift to, well, these niggas ain't nothing and they're not doing enough for us and we don't have to do anything because the men are messed up. The conversation should remain solely on, you know what? Even if these guys never do any of these things, we as women have a responsibility to stay on point regardless. Now, what are we going to do about our lack of being on point? When's the conversation go there? I'll let you ladies have the last word. Well, um, I, I certainly appreciate your viewpoint and um, I think it's a much needed dialogue. And I think, like I said, it does go back to the sensible women in our community. We, we have to be the voice and we, we are going to have to, even though we may not be the popular voice, the things that you're saying are not popular. The, the, the things that you're saying are going to hurt some people. They're going to cut deep, but we have to say it if we're going to change the culture, if we're going to change the future. I mean, it has to be done. And like you say, it starts with the women talking to the women. You can't talk to the women on our behalf. We have to do that. And so I think, I think I'm leaving here tonight with the charge that I have to do more and I need to make my voice heard and try to create a, tri a trickle down effect. So I appreciate um, you letting me be on the panel tonight. MK. Um, I agree with what you just said and I think it's up to us women who have at least some sense to to at least try to reach other women and let them know that the mentality that is rampant in the black community is not it's not doing as good things uh, it's up for us to take the matter in our hands and do something we cannot just sit there and complain and we have to act on our issues and thank you for having me tonight one of the probably the biggest issue here brothers and sisters you know you've been lied to you know full well that you have been lied to. You know that. And as black women in particular, you've been lied to by everybody. The media, your schools, your parents, everybody is lying to you. They're telling the white girls one thing, but you show up and they're telling you something different. A lot of you, your parents and your grandparents, they worked for white folks and they worked in their homes and raised those children. And what they told the white children at the homes they worked at, they gave them totally different advice than they gave you. And I'm not talking about on how to deal with white people. I'm talking about they gave you totally different advice on how to deal with other black people. Totally different advice from what they said to the white children of the uh, people that they work for. You've been lied to. 
you have been horribly deceived horribly and you've been betrayed many of you by your own parents and it's a shame and it's shameful and I'm I'm, I'm sorry that that's happened to so many of you and many of you are lost you're a lost cause because at this point in your lives I mean you're so set in your ways that the damage is irreparable it's irrevocable at this point but there are many of you who have not made that mistake there are many of you who have not fallen victim to that and you will be the ones who will have to rebuild black society black society has been destroyed but you will have to be the ones to rebuild black society you'll be the ones who are charged with doing that And what that means is that you will have to first accept that you were lied to so that you can stop this cycle of deception. It's not okay to betray your children. Just because you were betrayed by your parents, that's not doesn't mean it's okay to betray yours. Start telling your daughters the truth. Stop wanting to have mi misery having company. Stop betraying your own children. Stop saying that just because you were lonely and alone, that it's okay for them to be. Tell them how much you don't like it. Tell them, start telling them the truth that you wish you had a man. Tell them that as a woman, you are built to nurture and care for and that there's a difference between caring for a man and caring for a child. And that a child is not a substitute for a man. A child is not a substitute for a life partner. Start telling them about how, you're, how you hate being in a cold bed. I'm not saying to sit up here and spill everything to them, but I'm saying stop the lies. When they start talking like it's okay, you and they start looking at you and saying, well, you're alone. Start telling them about how much you didn't like that. How much you don't like it. How much you wish that weren't the case. Tell them about all the character flaws. Tell them about the good guys that you met and you told yourself that you would never get old and he would be waiting for you when you came back after you finished goofing off. And tell them how wrong you were. Tell them the truth about what happened to you. Tell them that you don't want them to be like you are. Tell them the truth so that they can have a better life than you did. Don't become the type of Judas to your children that your parents were to you by lying to them and telling them that everything's okay and that there are no problems and that they'll be all right being alone because you're not all right being alone you're not okay with it you're not pleased being the female that nobody wanted to keep you're not happy Having all these children by men that even having their baby could not force them to keep you. Nobody wants to be unwantable. Nobody wants to be unwantable. So stop making your children unwantable. Even after you have to sacrifice yourself, it's worthy at this point. You had your chance. You messed it up. Do the honorable thing and give your kids a chance you didn't have. 
You made your choices. Give them the option of better choices. And for those of you who are the other black females out there, start actually realizing what it is that makes a man desirable. Notice I didn't say a good man because you're not, you are not capable of defining that. Or you have no right to tell a man what constitutes a good man. But start actually being able to define these things that you say you want. First, start wanting the right thing and then actually be able to define it. Be able to define what intelligence is. Not some dude sitting up here running his damn mouth and blabbering on. Start being able to define what ambition is and a builder is. Start being able to define what stability is. Start being able to define what financially stable is. Let's start actually being able to define these things, can we? Can we actually do that for once? So that when you go out here to make these assessments, that you're actually able to define and explain and articulate exactly what you're going for. Because if you can't explain to us where you're going, you'll never get there. No wonder you never arrive at the destination. You can't actually tell us what the destination is. You can't actually explain to us where you're going. I hope you all got something out of tonight's dialogue here tonight. I want to thank MK and Kimberly for joining us here. And this concludes tonight's broadcast of Black Channel After Hours. I am, of course, your host, your brother, your humble servant, Mr. Jason Black. And until next time, brothers and sisters from around the world, remember, black is the future, and the future is uncompromising.